Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nick Graham, and uh, today I'm going to be presenting my uh, IB personal project. Uh, just a couple of opening notes. Um, uh, there was a lot about the IB project that I never really grasped the full concept of. I wasn't exactly too fond of just having to do the, pre the whole uh, work. It just seemed like extra work was going to be piled on top of me, but as I um, got further into the IB project, I realized that there was a whole lot more to it. Like, once you get into it, you start to realize that you've been kind of just um, worked around your entire life. You've always been told what to do and what not to do. And then when you get the chance of the IB personal project, you get to realize that you have an entire project that you can do on any topic that you want. So this could range from a number of possibilities that you could have at your disposal. So the decision making for the topics was a difficult time for me because I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. Um, there was a, so I did a couple of brainstorming and uh, eventually I came up with uh, writing short stories and it was always a type of skill that I neglected, I guess. I used to always do short stories, but um, I never really thought much about them. I would always start these um, books when I was a little kid and then never finish them. Uh, I would always just write and draw for fun, but um, uh, believe it or not, short stories wasn't my first uh, thing that I was going to be doing when I uh, was thinking about my topic. Um, I originally was going to do digital art and design, but I realized I didn't have the funds to buy a Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or stuff like that. So then I settled on short stories. Um, I wasn't exactly the best writer. Um, I always had a lot of trouble with metaphors and personifications, similes. I didn't know how to word things. So finding that type of stuff to try and fit into the context of things was a difficult thing to do. I uh, just let me go back here a minute, but um, when I was thinking about the topic, I was extremely intent on doing this when I thought of it after doing digital art. Um, I liked the idea of writing personal, or not personal, um, short stories, because once you get the pen down onto the paper, you just let your mind just kind of go wherever you want you have a whole, a whole range of possibilities that you can do. You can write anything, it's your story to create. So, the first story I made, I actually think I might have it here, but the first story that I made wasn't necessarily best. Um, I tried my hand at trying a, to write a horror story. Um, it started out with a guy going down to a, uh, just driving down, just got his license, uh, 17 years old, and he was driving down a dangerous part of town, and he had a, um, he witnessed a mugging, and he could have done something about it. He had some type of armament inside his car to try and stop it. Fortunately, he didn't, and he had just watched this happen to a woman and eventually the mugging had ended in her death. Um, the, he's, the person who was mugging the woman saw that there was a witness and tried to go after him, but he escaped. Once he escaped, he what felt extremely just sad that he had witnessed this and did nothing about it. So every year he went back and to try and to try and um, remember just what happened, say sorry every year he would go back. And then one year he was he was 26 years old, and he noticed something was different. 
there was someone in the alley with, the back tur with their back turned and they were covered in blood. They didn't know, he didn't know what was going on. So he approaches and he asks, what are you doing here? She tur he turns around and he realizes that they, the person has no eyes and they're just empty sockets. He realizes just from the sound of the voice that it was the woman that he could have saved that night. She says that, she had, that he has a debt to repay to her and she eventually just takes him, just takes him away and that's where I ended. I wasn't very happy with that story. It wasn't something that I had liked. And then one day I had, um, I had a breakthrough. Uh, a long time ago, uh, no, not a long time ago. It was um, about four months ago, I had a cousin who I unfortunately didn't know enough, but uh, know well enough. Um, he had to, he had a type of illness that he was dying of, and before long, he was in his last final days, and we had lit a candle to try just, you know, some kind of thing to remember him by, and then after about 20 minutes of this candle being lit, it just dimmed out. No reason, no, there was still full wick. There was no reason as to why it, it should have dimmed out. So we called up and like that, he had died. So I got inspiration for this story that I have up on the screen. Um, I named it Candles and I'm going to read you one of my, uh, one of the lines that I had really liked in this. So, it's about this girl named Elizabeth. Um, she really was, she really liked candles and she was in, she just really liked candles. Sorry, I said that twice, but um, she has not necessarily an overprotective father, but she really likes to know, but he really likes to know what she's doing. So this says, I'll be home before the candle gets, goes out. Okay, dad? Reluctantly, I let her go. Hours passed and time fell to a standstill. I looked over at the candle and I saw that it was slowly dimming out. She should be home by now, she promised. At 10.27 p.m., the candle went out. I waited for her to come home. Every minute felt like an hour as I stared at the clock. 20 minutes had passed time. Sorry. Every minute felt like an hour as I stared at the clock. 20 minutes had passed and she still hasn't come home. As I reached for the phone to call her, it rang. Overjoyed to see if it was Elizabeth, I picked it up. It wasn't. Mr. Dean, this is the fire department. We had just received a call and it involves your daughter. Words cannot describe my grief to you, but at approximately 10.27 p.m., your daughter fell asleep at the wheel and hit a tree. She was killed on impact. And that's where the story ends. It really brought a type of realism to me, and it just shows that if you can get what you want in down on paper, and it doesn't all have to be up in your head, it can happen out in the real world. It just seems like a type of emotional feeling because you can remember those that you lost through writing. I wrote another story uh, a couple of months later, and this one I wrote was a bit longer, but um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually, no, not even a week ago, a week ago, um, I had to put down my dog, but um, I wrote this one to remember her. It's not about a dog, but rather more of a um, bigger complex. Um, I wanted to remember her in some way, so I decided that I would appreciate her if I wrote about her. So I, 
it just may seem a bit, you know, childish or not really, but I don't know, but I, I wrote about this kind of zombie apocalypse and there was a father and son, they were in a car and they were on their way to, the father was driving his son to school. One day, out in the middle of a traffic jam of a highway, the car, there was a, something ran past them and they noticed that there were people just tearing each other apart and the sights that they had to witness were just too surreal for them. Um, the, when the son, he's about only five, or not five, uh, it's like seven years old, um, his name was Casper. He was um, trying to not lose his sanity in this whole situation, but one day it just became too much for him. They were trapped in the car for three days. Um, once he saw this entire thing happening around him, he just couldn't take it anymore and he let out a scream. But they attracted them all around. And I just want to read this uh, last part too. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, this isn't the right one. I'm sorry. Here it is. No, not that one. Oh, I don't have it in here. I'm sorry. One minute. Um, here it is. Okay. So I named this one, Don't Take My Sunshine Away. So, at the very end, I wanted to give a surreal feeling to the reader. So, I uh, wrote a more of a feeling to it. I wanted to get emotion running in. So, um, one of the uh, things managed to break through the glass and bite Casper's arm. And he, the father noticed that he wasn't doing well. He was getting very, very uh, lethargic, not moving. So as I read here, it says, I can see that we don't have much time left. Cracks have started forming in the windows and as they grew larger, and as they grow larger by the minute, Casper's breathing grows heavier and I know the end is near. I, re I keep a pistol in the glove box because the city is dangerous. However, I never use it since the outbreak because the sound would only draw more attention to us. As I drew Casper close to me, I noticed that he had started some humming a song to himself. I recognized it as his favorite song, You Are My Sunshine. I sang along to his hum, You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine, that, all that. Um, the cracks widened and I loaded my pistol. You make me happy when skies are gray. The cracks widened. I was in tears at this moment. I noticed that Casper was no longer humming. In fact, he seemed to stop breathing entirely. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. He opened one eye, then, I, then another, and he let out a low growl. I choked back a sob and lowered the pistol at my son. I choked out my final words. Please don't take my sunshine away. Casper lunged at me, the windows broke, and a sound of thunder echoed throughout the valley. That was, in a way, just a tribute to my dog because I would always sing that song when I was a little kid just to, you know, because I felt as though one day this would happen. So, you know, this that made me feel good about myself. But with IB, it gave me things that, you know, that I probably would have never done before. I probably would have never wrote that, that story. I probably would have never wrote the other one. In fact, the one about the candles, I had actually wrote and I had um, submitted it into a contest and I actually won the contest and received five Redbox gift codes, gift cards. So there are a lot of positive output into this entire thing. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do that will help you throughout the entire thing. I would have not written any of this without the IB project probably. So that's all I have for today. Thank you everyone.